briefly, I will talk about some of the uh, initiatives that I think we can do. And um, other than, of course, what, what we, we already mentioned at the professional level and conceptual and professional level. Um, and I will not list the traditional things like uh, dua and uh, uh, boycotting and uh, uh, donations and all of that. I will try to think of, oh, yeah, give you some uh, big ideas. The first thing is to recover the Igu style that we see in class. Um, students there lost what they are learning completely. So we have to think of solutions to that. Uh, we have to offer online courses. Maybe we offer admission to universities, uh, uh, foreign universities. Maybe even uh, uh, constructing virtual institutes, virtual educational institutes for them until they uh, recover back uh, what they lost. We have to fight misinformation. Um, and misinformation, you know, um, are causing, causing big decisions and big, uh, big things, even told by top world officials. So we have to fight that. And one of the uh, very nice in initiatives is the uh, October 7 fact check uh, website. Uh, you, sh you should, I think, uh, follow it and, and share. It's not my website, it's, but it's something that uh, that is very nice. We have to own our social media. We know we saw the censorship that is going on when we start to talk about this cause. Uh, to what time we will keep being under their control? We have to own our social media. Having our social media platform becomes a must. We have to own the narrative. Um, it, it's always said that the winner writes the history. And I think this is no longer valid. In the time of social media and time of uh, sharing the news like that, I think it's no longer valid. We can own our narrative. We can, uh, we can own the narrative of this story. And we have to write it now so that it won't be, uh, it won't change in, in the in the <coughs> way. So writing this present history in detail is an obligation. Raising awareness for next generations, uh, this is very important. I suffer to uh, to look for uh, some books for, for kids that will actually in a friendly way or even videos in friendly way that are uh, uh, talking about the Palestinian cause. For tens of years now, uh, 60 years or 70 years, we don't have something that is decent for our kids to really understand what's going on and understand the history. This is a shame. Uh, we have to educate the world about Islam, and you saw the effect. The effect was really huge. Uh, so that, of course, is, I think this is the time. There's no better time. There's no better time to, to, to do something like that. And again, the future belongs to Islam. I think the world is in very there is a very nice uh, uh, initiative by non-Muslims actually. It's called Tech for Palestine. I don't know if you know it. Uh, check this website. Uh, it has so many technical projects uh, that are for the cause of, of the Palestinian people and the Palestine uh, uh, case. Uh, so uh, you should follow it and maybe you should contribute to that. Um, I believe that in every speciality, people has to come together and think for the top priorities and think of long-term projects. Um, this is a must in each specialty, and maybe this is for, uh, uh, for graduates and, and professors more. There is a very nice initiative at CMU Q uh, that I think was like two weeks ago. Yes. Uh, I was part of this as well. Okay. Uh, this is very nice, and I hope that we can organize something like that, if possible. Uh, this is very good for the students to think about solutions to save lives. 